Amen. Still in the attitude of worship. Today we're just going to keep loving our God. We're just going to thank Him for the gift of life. He is the Almighty One. He is the Great High Priest. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the Bread of Life. Who is Jesus to you? He has given us the Holy Spirit that we may experience His love. Why not just wave your hands this morning and appreciate Him. Tell Him how He is, who He is. He is, He is the great King of glory. He is the Lord of Lords. He is our way maker, the lifter up of our head. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We honor you because there is none like you, O oh God. Father, we magnify your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
the resurrection and life. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are the great high priest. You are the king of kings. Father, we just want to bow before you and worship you. We just want to bow before you.
presence of God here today. Come on. Worship him. Hey, Many years ago, I was sharing with my sister. When I asked God for things and he said, no, I can't give it to you. It's not, you're not ready. It's not for you. I remember crying my eyes out. I remember thinking that I've worked so hard to be able to, to get this particular thing. And by the way, it was a job at, at the hospital. Um, it was a biomedical science thing. That was the degree that I read. And I, it was my second degree at that point. And um, my friends didn't have it qualifications like I did and they were they were excelling in biomedical sciences and I, I, I said to God I said I need to get the job I was doing training I, I I went to a level that I was earning 300 pounds a month you know backward never in the name of Jesus you know backward never in the name of Jesus and just to get that job just to get training and God said no so I served them day and night when interview comes they will pick an outsider they will never pick me then, then my friend said, I want to come and join you in the hospital. I said, oh, you can come. I taught her everything she needed. There were two rows and they, they had an interview. They took her instead. They didn't take me. I remember I wailed to my sister. I remember I cried. I said, God, why have thou forsaken me? And God said, no, I am not giving it to you. Direction. And guess what? Many years later, if I take in that job, I'll be stuck. A year after, God took me from a band two to a band eight, where people were achieving 20 years just within a year. Now, how many of us have God said no to? And you're just here right now, and things you want right now, and you God is saying, No, 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 no. You know what? You're gonna look back in a couple of months or years, and you know what? You'll be giving glory. You know, oh God, I just feel like testifying this morning. You know, Jesus, thank you. This morning I was meant to go to the airport. I was meant to wake up at 5.20 to get my kids. My alarm rang at 5. I didn't wake up. I woke up at 6. I was nervous. I jumped into the bathroom. And the Holy Spirit said, what's your problem? I said, God, I'm late. Because my kids traveled on unaccompanied. So when they're coming back, somebody's going to have to hand them over to me. And I had to be there. And I was like, God, I'm so late. I didn't even want to shower, you know. Thank God I didn't tell my sister that she would be crazy. How would you shower? So I went to the shower quickly, you know, sharp, sharp. I came out. And then I got in the car, I was panicking. It's going to take me an hour to hit you. And God said, check the arrival flight. It's been delayed for an hour, 30 minutes. And God said, I didn't want you. There's something called the devourer of time. When the devourer of time visits, it would take time away. Waste our time. But God is saying that for direction in 2018, we need to focus on God. Rebuke every devourer of time. Ask God for direction. Ask God for a clean pathway. If I got into the airport at 6.20 today, I could have wasted an hour or two hours doing nothing. Devourer of time. That's not our portion today. So this morning we're going to pray. We're going to use... The Bible says in Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Now, them can mean so many things. It doesn't have to be human. It could be something that you want. Something that you aspire. Something that you, you've been dreaming of for years. Something that God has even said no to for now. 
for the Lord God goes with you and he will never leave you not forsake you Marcus that I cried many years ago because I didn't get that job but God never left me not forsake me all he was doing was telling me it's not time let's begin to pray for the Lord direction in 2018 because you said in your word you never leave me not forsake me for the Lord I know I want some things right now that I'm not getting my hands on it but for the Lord that's okay I'm ready to wait come on come on come on come on master one more minute I am ready to wait, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. Maybe you are here today. You have not listened to God's no. It's your opportunity to know today. God's no is better than man's yes. Hey! Under the steps of my children, my household, my spouses, so that we will not miss that timing, so that the devourer of time will not eat us up. shouting and shouting. I don't know why, but I think there sounds shouts of victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday. Are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord today? Isn't it wonderful? The first Sunday of the year, we are alive and well. We can move our hands. We can open our mouth and words are coming out. Why not clap to this King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who made it possible for us to be here yet again today. To be honest, I never ever take it for granted. Every time I sleep and I wake up to see another day, I just say thank you Lord for giving me another opportunity to relieve today because I know to be better than yesterday. Amen. Uh, this is His Royal House. We are part of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. In the United Kingdom and worldwide, we have so many parishes. And we're privileged that you're able to come here to fellowship with us this morning. You could have gone to a million and one other church, but you chose to be here. Your coming today is not by accident. 
know that because God has a lot in store for you and I today in Jesus name. So uh, if you're worshiping with us for the first time or for the first time in a long while, let's see your hands, let's see your hands. Let's see a wave offering, hallelujah. Please let's make them feel welcome. Let's give them his royal house welcome. Hallelujah, we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for coming to his royal house today. The Lord will indeed bless you as you have come to fellowship in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. My sister, you're welcome. God bless you. After today, you're no more a uh, visitor in our midst. But I know that you're coming here today. God has in store for you a lot of things and you'll go home with them all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, I just want to say welcome to our first Thanksgiving service in this wonderful month of January, a month of direction. Amen. And I know the Lord would direct and order our steps throughout the year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Quickly, I just want to share a testimony I heard this morning. Um, a brother gave a testimony in his church because I was watching online just to let you know that when God is for you nobody can be against you he was actually on his way to church and there was this trailer in front of him he felt he was running late he wanted to overtake on the side he said to himself just quickly overtake as he wanted to the car wouldn't move and within that split second the trailer fell over if he had moved it would have fallen on top of him and he said, if not for God, that, you know, that made the car not to move at that particular time. So please, when we're talking about direction, even when we unknowingly want to make certain moves, know that because we have prayed today, the Lord will direct us in every aspect of our lives this year, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's make our pastor feel welcome. Happy New Year once again, pastor. We're waiting. We know God has <laughs> given you so much to pour on us. And the Lord will continue. Oh, wow. This Agbada is as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I had, to, I had to make sure that I fulfilled my promise this morning. When I, when, I saw, when I saw the special celebrant and uh, where is uh, Bishop uh, Yomi? I was like, thank God I'm in good company. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please let me celebrate the person sitting beside you. Say, congratulations. You're yeah, welcome to your year of recovery, your year of rest, your year of speed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when Sister, when Sister Jite, um, Bishop Jite, was um, leading the prayers this morning, you know, I, I stood back there and I was being me really ministered to. You know, sometimes when things don't happen, when we expect them to happen when they should, at times we, we feel a bit discouraged, and that's the truth. Our human self, we tend to ask questions that, God, why are you not doing those things? Because I have prayed, I have fasted, I have believed, I have done all sorts. But once in a while, God just decides to just take those things because he has something better in stock. Amen. And I know with time, such will be revealed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Someone said something. He said, when God says no, no is actually an answer. But sometimes we feel God has no answer. Well, God have answered. He has said no. <laughs> so no is a legitimate answer from God at times. Amen. And it's because of our own good. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning we have quite um, quite a lot of things which um, which we have laid um, in stock for us. Um, please let me celebrate the our uh, wonderful brother on the keys this morning. <laughs> Amen. I was, I was, when I was, I was feeling his hand, I was saying to myself, when I grew up, I would, uh, I'll be playing the keyboard like that. Amen. That's um, Brother Collins with time. I would introduce him much, much uh, better to us and you would see him some more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, before we, I'm going to, sh we're going to show a video to us from, from the, from the headquarters. I know a few of us might have seen it. But I would like us to see it again as a house. This church is about a few, well, some months old now. And um, the followership that we have on social media sometimes is, is almost unreal. There are times we do a few campaigns just to just put some things out there. And we're getting 5,000 likes. We're getting 3,000 views. And I'm wondering, where are these people? A few times, some people even send us messages. Please, can we follow the service? Can we follow this? Can we follow that? 
And at times I'm surprised that even some of us in this house, we don't actually even know to what extent we have those things on social platform. So please um, try and follow, I mean, on uh, Facebook, on YouTube, on um, Instagram. Um, the social handle for Facebook, I think, is um, uh, His Royal House UK. Once you type His Royal House UK on Facebook and on, um, on Instagram, and at the same time, you have the same thing as well on YouTube. On YouTube is RCCG His Royal House, and on Twitter as well, His Royal House UK as well on Twitter. Amen. Amen. So um, there's quite a number of things that you can see there from time to time, and um, the Lord will bless you as you do that. Praise the Lord. You know, one of the interesting things which um, I mentioned last week um, during the watch night service was that um, run up to the end of the year, I mean, having to consider, having to ask God as in, what should this year be like? It was such a struggle to get one actual word to describe what God has in store for us. And when I, when I was listening to what um, our general overseer said, you know, and um, quite a few um, mentors, which um, by the grace of God, um, God has put um, before me to follow, I just discovered that this must really be God. Because when God wants to do a complete work, sometimes you don't have one word enough to describe it. Because then again, some of us, we've had, um, we've had to like go through things. And last year, we had goals, we had things we had planned. We had things we had um, believed and held based on God's promises, which actually did not happen. But God is saying that, look, I'm not just going to give you new things now. Those things that you should have last year, you will recover them. Amen. And even the grounds that you have lost, he will grant you speed. Amen. You know, Sister Essie was saying something, I mean, Sister Jite was saying something this morning when she said, um, in, in, in a year, she gained a kind of a ground that even people who had gone ahead of him. Okay. One of the things sometimes which I always say to people is sometimes God delays some things, not because he wants to deny you, mm -hmm. but because he wants to give you multiple of it at once. Mm -hmm. You know, in Nigeria, um, in one of the other redeemed Christian Church of God, this month has been stated as the month of triumph. So when you say you are triumphing sometimes, that means you might not even have battle, but God will give you victory. Amen. You know, sometimes some people, <laughs> that sometimes you see some people, they will say the skin tells the story. They will have gone through so much struggle in life that just looking at them without them even saying anything, you will know they've gone through struggle. But sometimes God brings you into his blessing such that you don't even need to struggle. Someone says something, is God partial? Yes, God is partial towards his loved ones. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says to whom he will, he would have compassion. Mm -hmm. And on whom he will, he will, show, he will have mercy. And it's not for anything other than the mercies of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and that's the reason why our boast is in God. Because we know that even at all times, he has us, he has good plans for us. The Bible says, for, it says all things work together for good. For each those who love God and those who are called according to his original intention. You know, his original intention is to bring us into fulfillment. Amen. Amen. So we're going to watch um, a very short clip. Why not just put your hands together for the Lord for that? Amen. 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 You know, in this house, one of the reasons why at times I always like to play those things, I so much believe in what is called the Father's Blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know, this is someone who forgets their roots, forgets their source, dries up. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we, in this house, we don't forget that we have a root, we have a father um, in person at the moment. I mean, in person of um, Daddy Gio in the physical. Amen. So, and we make sure that we take instructions and we take our offshoot from him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm going to read the, the prophecy for the church, which um, he actually didn't um, say in that, uh, in that broadcast um, publicly. Um, the first one here says, a lot of us will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Amen. Many of us will triumph over those things trying to keep us down. It says, both faithfulness and unfaithfulness will speedily and vigorously be rewarded. Amen. Amen. And he also says that um, the countdown to judgment and harvest begins, depending on which is your own there. Amen. amen. It's good to see an amen still. Amen. And it says, um, countdown to comprehensive victory begins for many. Amen. You know, one of the things which... Um, 
I, I know sometimes some people um, always try to do, um, try to worship pastors or try to say pastors are, I mean, they, <laughs> they're not human. I believe so much that each one of us, no, the best of men is still a man. The best of men is just but a man. You know, but I believe that at the moment he's the prophet to this house. And that's why most of the things that comes out from his mouth, personally, I take them seriously. Last year in 2017, when he first made, when he made predictions about um, global kind of weather and all that, it said things will be happening in twos. Not long from then, we had so many things happening in America and here and there. I don't know if you heard about the floods. Like this one, he said this year, he said there won't be too much fire outbreaks, but there will be floods. The kind of ways we've been hearing of floods on the news these days, I, I'm, I don't know if you're following the news. Mm -hmm. In New York yesterday, they said um, they were expecting a temperature of minus 35 degrees, mm -hmm. that it has never, yeah, ever yeah. happened before. Mm -hmm. You know, And this is just some few days into the year. Mm -hmm. So if I were you, even the positive ones, you're keen to it, and the ones which are not so positive, you take them as a kind of a father giving an advice that you should check and watch those things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And um, one other thing again, which he, I know we had mentioned to us um, before that um, the fast was declared, which is still the same thing from the March, from January 11th, next week, Thursday. But he has made a little amendment to that, and I will explain. Um, he said this year's fasting will be in two phases. And the first one is going to start from um, January 11th, which is next week, Thursday, to March the 1st. And it's for 50 days. Initially, it was for 40 days, but... Is for 50 days. And the second phase is um, July the 1st to 30th of July. And that is the second phase. But one, um, one thing which he, he normally would say is if you want to speed it up, say for example, you just want to concentrate on it and stop thinking about food 6 o'clock every evening, whether you should eat at 6 or eat at 5 or uh, eat at midnight or eat at 1 a.m. Or if, if you'd want to stop yourself from all those calculations, just do liquid and just blow through the thing. You know, liquid does not mean using Gary and uh, making it very uh, watery, you know, oh. but uh, <laughs> liquid is liquid. Though you can do soup. You can do soup with some, uh, yes, you can actually do soup. Yeah, well, go on, yeah. <laughs> so far you don't add a carrot to it. <laughs> you can actually do, you can actually do pap, really. You know, you can do pub. I'm not a pub person, you know, so you can do pub, you can. What is what? You can do custard, but. You see, the, let me, you, see, you see, the truth is this. If in your heart you know that you are cutting corners, then that is an issue. Because we can go on and on about what is acceptable liquid and what is not. A little bit of effort is soup as well. Do you understand? You see, but the truth of the matter, by the time you eat effort with a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of, uh, what's it called? Um, turkey and a lot of things. That's proper food. <laughs> you know, but, it's, but at the end of the day, is really your conscience. You know, and the truth of the matter is, I, I don't like to be legalistic when it comes to fasting. Your spirit will tell you when you yourself, you are trying to like, you are just trying to cut corners. Then, I remember the first time we got involved in um, liquid. There's a friend of mine, um, a pastor friend, you know, as far as it was concerned, chocolate was liquid. He said, because sometimes when you're eating soup, there is a bit of, you know, some of those soups that you buy, you have some punjon or whatever they call it, those little, little biscuit like things. So, as far as it was concerned, a little bit of sneakers here and there with a cup of water, that's liquid. But after some point, he got to know that, uh, uh, bros, that's not liquid, sir. You know, so, but you can do soup, you can do juice. Let me tell you the truth. By the third day, you actually not have appetite for those soup. After some point, you get tired of doing those liquid over and over again. And the best thing to do is just warm water. Once in a while, it might be good to maybe take juice just to just maintain your sugar level. But aside that, yeah? Okay. But aside that, I mean, just um, being an... And, and one thing I must say at this point as well, if you are under medication, you're breastfeeding, or you know you have a health challenge, please... Fasting does not take you to heaven, except you want to go faster than your time. Please don't, you don't have to fast. And Daddy Gio normally gives that blanket warning. You don't have to force yourself to do that. Some people had 
um, injured themselves in the same, the name of wanting to like him. You know, the, the truth of the matter is fasting doesn't change God. You know, but you can give something. You can decide what exactly you want to give up that period. You can decide to give up uh, watching Coronation Street for a month. You can decide to give up something, you know, just for that period to, at least to use that to chase yourself while you seek the face of God. But at the same time, which, whichever way, just make sure that you're praying and you're using that period to just seek the face of God and just expect, um, you know, when you say the word waiting on God, I know colloquially, most people waiting on God, you just say, well, waiting on God means fasting. Waiting on God means you are being sensitive. You are using that period to put aside what you know best. You are waiting for the supernatural to minister to you. Amen. And you know, I'm talking about the theme of the month as well. Isaiah 30 verse 21, it says, and you would hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way walk in it. So you have so many things that you can use to, even in this period, to use to just, um, um, to just pray. I will just read some things just because I really, um, there's so much that we need to do today, but I don't, I don't want to preach. So, I mean, I was struggling with my brother then. I was wondering, how do all these, our fathers in the Lord, preach in Agbada? I was feeling very uncomfortable. You know, but I just want to just give us, um, read one or two things, which um, um, I believe God just wants us to bear in mind for, for this month. Uh, I mean, for this, for this year. Um, the theme of the, of the year is 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. You can read the whole of that um, scripture. Um, and I will just read. It says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue you, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. There are five things which God has been laying on my heart to say to this house. And that's because I know that God has um, earmarked us for something different and something supernatural this year. Amen. So the first one is, God expects you to be decisive this year. Whatsoever you want to do, whatever God has given you to do, whatever direction is given to you, you have to be decisive. You know, the other thing is you have to be determined in the things that you're going to do. You have to be determined, you know, because things will happen to want to sweep you off the path. Things will happen to want to tell you that maybe you have not received what you think you received. Things will happen to make you feel as if maybe God is not saying that. But you have to be determined. You have to set a goal. You see, for me, most times into the year, when people are talking about New Year resolutions and all that, for Christians, what it should be is New Year goals. And because we have a God who dwells, He does not exist in a bound of time. You need to like say to yourself that even if He's saying a particular goal, you said there's something world is called um, short term goals, long term goals. I'm just really rapping because I really need to pass this across, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. But with, with time at some point, we would really find the time to go into it. But God will want to give you some short-term goals and long-term goals. And each and every one. When God gives a vision, he gives a time allotted to those visions. Do you understand? There is a time, there is a place, there is the who, there is the how. You know, and those are the things that as soon as God gives you those directions, make sure that you are determined and you stay on it. And the other thing is to be deliberate. In the things that you're going to do this year, be deliberate. If you want to become a billionaire, be deliberate in the things you do. If you want to be a successful wife, be deliberate. You want to be a successful husband, be deliberate. You want to be an academic, whatsoever it is. You want, even if you want to be a prophet, if you want to be a minister, be deliberate in the things which you're going to do this year. In the things in your plan, in the kind of course you do, in the way you speak, in the way you conduct yourself, in the way you carry yourself, be deliberate. Because someone says something, they say the way someone dresses is the way the person is addressed. If you know where you're going, it informs the way you carry yourself. Amen. So be deliberate in your actions this year. And the other thing, which is more like a kind of um, um, an instruction as well, don't delay. Once you have received something, once you know that this is what God is saying, don't delay. Because most of the time, procrastination, you're saying to yourself, maybe everything is not in place. You know, the Bible says, this sign shall follow. You have to take a move first, then the signs follow. But sometimes when we, when we have things planned to do, we're, we're expecting to have the whole money in the bank before you set out. No. When you start, it has what is called moving with faith. When you start it, you discover that God will start giving you supply. At the end of the day, you ask yourself, where did this money come from? Because if you are going to wait for all those money to gather up in your bank account before you go ahead with that project, it might actually not happen. You know? But if God has said to you to go ahead with it, start with it and see God surprise you. Amen. And the last one, which I would say just for now, is don't be discouraged. 
things will happen in the course of the year. You know, sometimes in the beginning of the year, sometimes people are always looking for people to just tell them just the sweet things. You know, and we pump ourselves up with so much excitement, forgetting that sometimes there is something called life. You know, life sometimes tells you with some kind of things which you might not even see. But thank God we have a spirit which tells us, who informs us of everything. Amen. So, things might happen along the line. Don't be discouraged. If God has said to you, this year you are getting married, and all of a sudden, um, the guy you're supposed to be getting married to, I know I, I'm seeing one or two people looking at each other, but I won't look at that direction, so it's okay. So, <laughs> you know, so, if God has said to you that this year you are getting married, and all of a sudden, the person that you're going to be getting married to, things are not happening the way it should. Be focused. Don't be discouraged. Because the way God will do his own thing, he will do his own thing in his own way, in his own style. And that is why he is God. Amen. So please don't be discouraged. And even because sometimes people are even discouraged, even all of a sudden the things you've been praying for is not happening and you're saying, look, God, please just stay in one corner and just let me stay on this side. Don't be discouraged. Help through the year, always remember that. Don't be discouraged and he would indeed surprise you for good. In Jesus' name, amen. How is that for just for like five, ten minutes? Amen. amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anyone who has um, a testimony for us this morning who wants to share a testimony? Praise the Lord. This is my testimony. Um, I just want to say God has been good to me and God has been good to my family. And I have just a small family of me and my younger sister, Caroline, there and our children. Um, I was just sitting down this morning and then thinking of how far God has brought us and how far God has um, brought me. Um, I look back to my background, where I came from and how my journey to Europe since 1994. And it has been... Um, it has been a struggle, you know, I am um, somebody like, um, I, I don't know, I came from a very poor background and then when you're told that you can amount to anything and then I just want to bless God that um, in spite of all, for some reason, for everything that God has delayed in my life, you understand, God has given me a, a amount of, um, of thanksgiving because um, I look at everything that I've been able to achieve today. At one point, people have refused to help or for, for one reason or the other, but today I can boldly say that for everything that I am, for all that I have, it is only God. Because for some reason he will take away people, he will take away things from my life so that I, at the end of the day I can give him the glory. So I can proudly say today, if I look back to my life, you understand, for every time I have been disappointed, for every time something has refused to come my way and I'm dependent on human being, God will remove those people God will not take me through a journey, something that I probably will probably, okay, maybe it should be one year. God might take me through a longer journey. And at the end of the day, he will give me the grace and the strength to achieve that thing by his mercy and by my own doing so that no human being can take the glory for my life. So I just want to thank God and to say that because for somehow God has always remained that um, last minute dot com just when I want to give up. He always, you know, comes in and take charge. Um, I don't want to go deep into my story because I don't want to be so emotional. But um, I just had to go back to where I'm from. I was showing my um, my sister the house that I was born in, Ajegunle. Um, for some reason, every other house in that street has been kind of remodified. But that house still remains the same. And the people that, that I was born there in 1969, before then, my mom said that we met some people that some, like a whole handful of them are still there. And then I look at where we are today, me and my sisters and my brothers, and how we've managed to change our life. I think it's a testimony. And to feel that, you know, um, I'm standing here and I, you know, it's by the grace of God. And I didn't sleep well over the week. I've just been like reminiscing and going back, going through a lot of things. I just felt to myself that, you know, I think God deserves the praise. So for some reason, if at one point you're running after you're looking for something and it looks like you understand and you're going to people and they keep saying no, they keep, look onto the creator, you understand? And if, if I want to take you through a longer route, you know, don't dispute, just do it. So at the end of the day, you can boldly, boldly give God the grace and the glory. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to give God thanks um, for travel mercies and bringing me back safely. Um, my testimony is um, going back home which is Sierra Leone 
I haven't been for 13 years and I kept praying and I said oh um, God I really do need to go and see my grandma because I haven't seen her for 13 years since I've been well I've been here 16 years but I haven't seen her after that and I just kept praying and praying and praying and I was just like okay let your will be done I bought my ticket my ticket got cancelled I didn't even know my ticket got cancelled they put the money back in my in my account and I thought oh how come I've got so much money in my account and then I was thinking where did all this money come from so anyhow, I looked and then it says Air France has cancelled my ticket. Oh my goodness. So I started calling. I called, 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 called. And I was crying and I was like, I haven't seen my grandma for 13 years. Please, I need to go. The woman didn't even give me any mercy or anything. She just said, well, there's nothing we can do. We can just put a complaint in. I was bitterly crying and I was like, God, I need to go home because I really want to see my grandma. Because every time I speak to her, she's like, when are you coming? When are you coming? So... Anyhow, so I decided to buy another ticket. And as I was praying and I was like, God, please, I don't have the money because I've already started using the money. I didn't even know I've started using the money. So I started praying and I was like, Lord, let your will be done. If I'm supposed to go home, then let it happen. If not, let me just stay where I am and I'll just tell them that I'm not even going to come. Anyhow, so um, the Lord, I don't know how the money got in there, but I got the money to actually travel and I traveled in business class. I don't know when that happened but the ticket i booked i just booked a ticket and i just said lord let your will be done anyhow so the ticket i got was even better than the ticket i bought before and i got to see my grandma i got to see all my family they were even surprised they said oh you thought you're not coming but i came anyway but i just want to give god thanks because he's faithful he's merciful whatever you need he always has that desire to actually give it to you you may not receive it the day that or the time that you need it but he's always there and i just want to give god thanks praise the lord offering time i thought we'll be excited it's the first offering from the year 2018 hallelujah it's offering time i'll quickly read from one of my favorite um verses in the Bible is um, 2 Corinthians 9, 6-7 By this I say He which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly and he who soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he's proposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or not of necessity, but for God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah! So if we look at these verses, you know if you reap you sow, you know, give according to your pocket, not out of necessity, not because I'm standing here and saying it's offering time, but because God loves a cheerful giver. I was speaking to someone that is very close to me. She is a super giver. And when I mean a super giver, I mean, I mean super giver. Someone that will empty her bank account. Someone that can, God will say, give your car away and she will do that. And then a, a, a word came and the word was that you need to cross the line. And she didn't understand what it meant to cross the line. And after soliciting with the Holy Spirit, it was about giving. And when I heard this, I was really shocked. I was like, how much do you want to cross the line? You've gone beyond boundaries that I can ever imagine. You know, so I'm thinking for that kind of person, God is still staying cross the line. So it's the first Sunday of 2018. I want to challenge someone to cross the line today. You know, we're asking God for direction. In everything, let's ask God for direction in terms of our giving as well. You know, we talked about, we are in a series of talking about the Holy Ghost in Sunday school, you know, and the Spirit of God in us can actually direct us, you know. You could have that relationship with God where before you come to church, God has already told you how much you need to give. Or, you know, we talked about the fruit of the Holy Spirit whereby goodness and love, you know, it's not about you, you know, it's about charity, where God will say, go and give X, go and give Y. It's, you know, it, it's not symbiotic whereby you give, you receive, you just give because God has commanded you to give. So I challenge someone today to cross the line in 2018, you know, and as God will do great and mighty things like that, Jesus said that mountains will be moved. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and I pray that in the name of Jesus, as we give, you know, God will reward us according to our giving in Amen. Jesus mighty Amen. name Amen. Um, it's on the screen on how to give there are different ways of giving you know just choose which one that is applicable to you and God will bless you in Jesus mighty name Amen Jesus Jesus it is with much pleasure that I praise your name
And I've talked about directional giving, you know, and, and when Sister Jita was talking this morning, she talked about the fact that, you know, sometimes God says no, or the doors are closed for a reason. We were waiting for God in 2018 for direction on, you know, on an exposure beyond reasonable doubt. You need to sit and wait for God. We just want to give God all the glory for the opportunity to give to him. The opportunity to give to the beginning of 2018 is not by power, not by mind, but by spirit. Everlasting Father, it's a privilege which we, we are humbly honored to be able to give to you today. We appreciate the life in us, the bread in us. Many have slept but have not woken. up. Indeed, we are grateful, O oh Lord. As we give to you, O oh Lord, Father, accept our sacrifice and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, that this year we will cross the line in giving. We will cross the line in giving in the name of Jesus. And as we've read in the, in the book of Corinthians, O oh Lord, that you will reward us according to our giving. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. to marry the babe on their birthdays. I'm marrying you on my birthday. Yeah, you know. Let's raise up their hands and just pray that the Lord will surprise them for good this year. In the name of Jesus. Malihandre de Boschka. Even as I celebrate, as your son celebrates his birthday and as they celebrate together, even you're bringing them together. 
Lord in heaven, we ask that even in this time that indeed you surprise them for good. Amen. That according to the time of life, Lord, that you will visit them, O oh God. Those things which you've promised them, the things which you've marked for them. Father, Lord in heaven, let them lay their hands on them. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere they go, O oh God, Father, we ask that your hand of goodness will go ahead of them, will go with them. In the name of Jesus. Father, we'll give you praise. Give them a surprise wedding present. Give them a surprise birthday gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father Lord in heaven, I commit you for I commit your daughter into your hands. Lord in heaven, I pray that even this month, even as you've made it a month, a special month for her. Lord in heaven, let her continually have reasons to rejoice. Let her continually have reasons to say thank you. Let her continually have reasons to dance before you, O God. Lord in heaven, we pray that even as you've brought even another year, an addition into her life, every other addition that she's looking up to you for. Father, Lord in heaven, speedily I pray, Lord, that you perfect the works of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving, we're going to do a special Thanksgiving. Amen. You know, some um, some months ago, we, well, I said some months ago, as if it was five months ago, just last month, actually. <laughs> last last year. year. Yeah. <laughs> we had, um, we had a wedding last, um, last month, we had, um, we had a wedding ceremony in this house. And um, today, yeah, they would give you some time to dance in front, don't worry, so that you don't fall with your brother on the stairs. You know, and um, so this morning we we just want to say just want to say thank you. So I mean, the the strong pillar in this house, and um, the here with family and friends, and um, I believe each and every one of us. So please, let's um, let's celebrate, let's dance. Both of them are members of the Living Spring. Both of them are singers. Yeah. Are we ready? Jehovah reigns.
after um, the wedding ceremony and um, the couple, they go on honeymoon, the moon and everything. I remember we saw them just briefly when they were coming back from the moon. And the way they were smiling was different. So can you just testify if you want to testify? Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry, I have a song. Taloto. Talo Juwala. Talo Toa. Talo Juwala. Laya la Rukosio. Talo Toa. Laya la Rukosio. Talo. Hold me. When he hugged me, 
on where they where they lay my father on it. There's a there's a I think is a cup they put it on top of the coffee and they open the coffee and take something out of the coffee and give it to me. And I, I was I don't know the meaning, but I wake up in that dream. But I keep on asking people. What's the meaning of this dream? And nobody can explain it. Electronically, or I mean, if you're giving electronically or not, I would want you to dance from your seat and dance, dance forward. You know, the choirs, I mean, the choir, I mean, the ushers with directors. So just dance on your feet and and dance forward. And um, we're gonna take care. Uh, we're gonna take. We're gonna take that um, rejoicing. Amen. Amen. You know, and again, like I mentioned the other time, it's see it as your last dance. See it as a time for you to dance specially. 
you know, and that you're dancing as well is the seed as well, amen. You know, and tie your blessings to it, tie your prayer points to it. That's the Father concerning this. I'm rejoicing and I'm thanking you ahead. And see the Lord surprise you this morning, amen. Hallelujah. Live it. Amen. Oh, 
song as a prophecy and we ask that father that even anyone that will see us this year they will see your glory over our lives and even when they ask us why the reason of this blessing father would have the boldness and the testimony to say that indeed 
it is not of us, it's not of anyone, but it's of God who has increased us, it's of God who has blessed us so, it's of God whom we are loving. And that will be our song, that will be our testimony. We speak to everything that has to do with us. We ask, Father, that receive the peace of God, receive the increase of God, receive the blessings of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be thou exalted, O God. You said in word that continually, that you daily load us with benefits. You said that continually, that the voice of rejoicing will be heard in our tent. That will be our testimony, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, can we just rise up on our feet and just begin to, let's just thank him for the week. Let's thank him for the month ahead. Just give him grace. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank him for the week ahead. Just receive strength to receive unction. You know, sometimes in the midst of the noise, sometimes we it's, it's hard to listen. Why not just let him just minister back to you? And just let him just speak to you. He might just be saying to you a word of encouragement. He might just be giving you a word of instruction. Just, just let him just minister back to you. He speaks all the time. He speaks all the time. He's mindful concerning everything which you feel. The Bible says we have not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He, he knows what you feel. Thank you, Jesus. Father Lord in heaven, we say thank you. Thank you. As we go forth into the week, we go forth in your strength. We go forth in your grace. We say concerning us this week that the trees of the fields will clap their hands. We say concerning us this week that strangers will hear our voice and they will tremble out of their hidden places. Your favor, your mercy will speak to us this week. Everything we lay our hand upon to do this will be successful. Amen. Everywhere our name is heard, everywhere our file is brought up, Lord in heaven, your favor, your mercy will speak for us this Amen. week. Father, we thank you for a new song. Thank you, Father, we thank you for a new dance in our step. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Why not say to someone standing beside you, say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Say to another person, say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Say to 500 people, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's say to our new couple, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and twins and mercy shall follow you forever and ever. Let's say it again. Again, surely Goodness and mercy shall follow you and triplets in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week. Hallelujah.